Hello, it's Rachel and I'm back today with an art journal page. I'm working just on some plain white cardstock as a loose leaf journal page and I'm using some of the really old dilution sprays so these colours are no longer available but I still have them so um, I intend to use them up before I buy any of the um, ones that are put out by Ranger so I still don't have any of those. So I've selected two colours, blues and um, purples are going to be the shades of the page and once that's dry I'm taking some complementary colours in archival link to add some detail to the background. So here I'm using a stamp by Art Impressions. I think it's called Beauty Background because that is what the text is about. It's a very tiny um, typewriter text so it lends itself well to um, some sort of indiscreet background detail and I'm stamping this in archival link in the colour cobalt. Next I'm using a stencil by Crafters Workshop. This is um, just a circle stencil called Mini Circle Grid and the archival link I've chosen here is called Cactus Flower which is a purple toned pink so it's going to complement the colours that I've um, selected for the background shading. And I'm using a piece of Ranger cut and dry foam to apply this. This is something I do all the time. So if you've seen my videos before, you know that this is my um, preference to apply inks to the background with rather than any of the blending tools or the newer blending brushes that are on the market. And it's just because it's what I've used for years and years. So I'm familiar with it. I know how it works. Um, so that's what I stick with. Now I'm using a piece of sequin waste and now I'm adding some highlights to the background. So I've chosen to use a white acrylic paint. This is just a um, titanium white fluid acrylic by Golden. And again, applying this with a piece of Ranger Cut and Dry Foam. And <clears throat> if you're going to use Ranger Cut and Dry Foam for applying paints, um, you really do need to wash that piece of foam afterwards otherwise it will be no good because the paint will harden onto it. Now I've cut out some die cut hearts these are going to be the focal images of the page and I've chosen three shades of neo colour twos in um, greens to um, add colour to these and I've chosen this colour because it's going to be a contrasting colour to the blues and purples on the page so it will stand out and provide some interest. So I'm just applying the colour by scribbling on in different areas, the three shades of green, going from lighter in the centre of the hearts to darker towards the edge of the hearts. And then I'm going to use a paintbrush and a little bit of water just to melt the wax and blend those colours onto those hearts. So what you're going to end up with is a watercolour effect as opposed to the wax pastel effect which makes neo colours extremely versatile to use. So here you can see the paintbrush that I'm using and just a small amount of water on the brush really um, and that's because I'm just working on regular cardstock it's not watercolour paper and I don't want to have any pilling of the fibres of the paper although this one's quite a good one it's by um, House of Cards, which I found on Amazon. It's, uh, yeah, it's pretty good in holding up for water. Now I'm going to use some golden um, matte medium to add these to my page. And again, this is something I use all the time. I do have to be quite careful here because everything is water soluble on the page. Although the Caran d'Ache Neo colours, if you've dissolved the colour um, completely, once that's dried it does become permanent um, but my concern is more the purple and blue inks that I sprayed onto the backgrounds at the start so they will move if they get in contact with any kind of moisture or um, water that you're adding afterwards. So you can see here that I barely touch the page at all and after I've finished applying those hearts I'm choosing a second stencil to work with. This one again is by Crafters Workshop and it's tiny circles and the design is called Mini Beaded Curtain. And I'm using this with some texture paste. The one that I have here is a light texture paste. It's by Prima. And I'm applying a fairly light coat of it um, with a, the help of a palette knife. And the idea is that I wanted this particular element of the page to be just really on the top half. So 
it's kind of those beaded circles falling down the page I do um hesitate a little bit about putting them over the hearts because I wasn't sure I wanted to add anything else to the hearts um but then I just thought well I've got the stencil on the page now so I do start to cover some of those hearts um two of them at least I think I'll leave one without any stencil paste on it and it doesn't take long to dry the light um, modeling paste or texture paste they only take about 20 minutes to be touch dry so that you can go back and stencil some more and obviously here you can see that I've used it um, after that clip to finish off the page now I'm adding some color to those um, stenciled circles I'm using um, twinkling h2o's so this color is called ginger peach and it's quite a um, deep pink toned purple it actually appears on video um, almost the correct color here in this clip but on the next clips it's way darker and I'm not sure why that is but it's more of a, a deep magenta color in real life so it's not quite as dark as what the page shows um, but this takes it does take a little while and a little patience it might not be for everybody obviously you can't mix a watercolor directly into the paste and I do get asked quite often why I don't mix directly into the paste and usually it's because it dilutes the paste which makes it more difficult to put through a stencil and also if it's any kind of metallic shade then you don't get the metallic finish it really dulls that now I'm adding some um, further die cut elements to the page. So these are just some die cut circles. The larger one is a spellbinder circle and the smaller one was just taken from a random die set which had a, a circular piece. Um, and that was because the smallest spellbinders one I had was that larger one that you can see now. So I wanted something a little bit smaller than that. Again, I'm using the Neo colors to um, go with the heart pieces that are already on the page and just applying them in the same fashion just by scribbling on some colour and then um, adding some water to melt the colours um, just with a paintbrush and again going from light in the centre to dark at the edges exactly the same as the hearts that I did previously. And whilst I'm finishing off these circles let me tell you about my thoughts of the page. I didn't really have a theme for this one just the colour scheme. I knew I wanted the blues and the purples in the background as well as the contrasting green so that's where I started and let my ideas develop from there. And once these circles are all completed and they are dry I'm adding them to my page. I'm using some um, matte medium again here however um, it's not really suitable to go over the texture paste so once I've got everything where I wanted it um yeah I realized this and I went back with some uh gel medium which is a little bit stronger than matte medium and that held them no problem they are going to be obviously a little bit raised from the page um but that's a, a design feature it's um it's okay with me I like to have some texture on the page but some people might want it a little more consistent uh, so for the quote on the page um this is a quote about um having a good heart and i've printed it out on a brother label making machine and i printed it over a layer of matte medium because it's naturally a gloss finish and it will not take paint uh, if you add a layer of matte medium to it that acts um, almost like a clear gesso and gives it a ground um, to put some additional colour over it. So that's what I did. And I used the um, H2O World Colour that I'd used for the um, little beaded curtain texture um, in Ginger Peach, I believe. So now I'm just adding the quote where I want it on my page. And it's very easy to get the backing off this because it's split down the middle. Um, so if you just bend it in half it'll come off fairly easily and also just using some tweezers um, where necessary just to kind of guide it into place and make sure it's straight now I'm going to add some um, chalk pastel to the edge this is a pan pastel color in phalo blue and I'm using the pan pastel soft tool um, sponge to apply it and this is just really to frame the page 
make it look more finished it's it does take a little work to go over texture paste and in hindsight this is something that i should have done before i added the texture paste but at that time in the page i didn't know what kind of border i was going to add or what medium i was going to use so this is just the stage in the process that i thought to do this and that's why i'm adding it um despite the difficulty of going over texture paste it's not that difficult it's just that it will tear up your sponge if you're not too gentle so i go a little more gently and then just go over it twice once it started grabbing the page and i don't set it um, or fix it with anything it's just a journal page i've never had any problems with it coming off um, now i'm outlining the text this is a posca paint pen with a fine nib in black and I'm just doing a scribbly line around the text just to give it a little bit of character and to make it stand out and then I go around the hearts also adding a dotted border to the inside of them again to give them a little more character to make them interesting and so that they stand out from the rest of the page and once I've done this, I start adding some other doodle elements to the page too. So I choose to do a solid line around the heart as well as the dotted um, interior line. And I extend that to going around the circles as well. So the circles also have a solid line around them as best I can through the texture that is on the page. If you aren't familiar with Posca paint pens, they are filled with an acrylic paint, but because they have a nib to them, they um, obviously work like a pen, which makes your work much more precise and accurate. And it can be a lot of fun to add these finishing details to a page, as well as obviously creating a, an extra design feature. And now might be a good time to tell you that um, it's greatly appreciated if you hit the like button it's super easy to do doesn't cost you anything and it really helps my channel so i do appreciate it when people hit that like button i know that sometimes not everybody has time to make comments or some people are arting whilst they're watching videos i know i sometimes do that but the like button is really easy to hit and as i say greatly appreciated it puts my video out there and helps it become part of everybody else's feed and be a recommended video so that more people find me. So you can see here the difference that black pen makes in adding some character and making everything stand out on the page, making it look more bold. Now I'm going back to some hearts that I used on last week's page actually. Um, so these were just cut from a unbranded dye uh, they were left over from last week and since i am um, working on a page that has hearts on again i thought i could use these up so i'm using another h2o color this is meridian this time it's like a deep teal color so it'll go with the um, blues that are already on the page and again just adding this color quite liberally um, using a paintbrush. I do spray the H2Os before I start using them so that the colours are much more creamy. They can be a little dilute and insipid if you don't do that. So if you have any kind of watercolour cake paint, uh, that might be something you would consider doing if you're not very happy with the results currently. Now I'm just arranging them onto the page where I want them. So I've decided to put them over the main hearts as well as over some of the smaller circle elements and again just using the matte medium to apply these they're not going over any of the texture elements so I don't need the gel medium here and they'll stick quite easily where I want them to be and once I've added these hearts to the page that is actually the last step on today's journal page so I really hope you enjoyed watching I always find these projects a lot of fun to complete and therefore I do like to share them with other people and I hope it gives you some inspiration and ideas to create your own page. Um, I'd like to ask if there's any projects in particular that you'd like me to be doing on my channel. I know journal pages were um, requested so I've done a couple of journal pages this last couple of weeks but if there's any other type of projects that you've seen in the past that you'd like to see more of um, do let me know via the comments. 
and as i said previously it's really appreciated if you hit that like button apart from putting my video out there it also um, helps me see as a content provider that um, my content is obviously something people want to see as usual there'll be a link in the video description to the full product list that i've used in today's project and there'll be also my social media links for facebook twitter instagram as well as um, details of my other youtube channels and also my etsy shop so that is everything thank you very much for watching and i will see you again soon